Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon back with a new video on Angular routing inside Ionic apps. This is more of a basic type video. Um, if you're already an experienced Ionic developer, there might be not a lot of new stuff in this video, but for all the beginners out there, this video is really focusing on the new um, routing aspect of Ionic 4. Um, if you don't know about the old navigation, that might be a plus. Anyway, let's take a look at a few different items that we need to understand. So first of all, I created a blank new app. You don't really have to follow along. This is more like a bit of explaining video. So once you start your application, you might ask, where is actually my component coming from? Why is there something showing on the screen? To understand this, we first of all take a look at our index.html file. And in here, we will find the body, which only contains an app root or route. No, this should be the app root, I guess. So not really a lot of information, but we need to know that the app component is connected to this. And if we look at the app component, we will see that it has the selector app root and the app component HTML. So this is basically the first HTML file after the index HTML that will be loaded into this place, the body of our website. So checking out the app component HTML, this holds the ion app, which is responsible for uh, later adding the right styling, for example, to your application. So when you run your app on iOS or build it for iOS or Android, this class will also take care of applying the right styling. And in here we got the ion router outlet. This is basically just a little different stuff from the regular uh, Angular outlet. So the Ionic outlet contains a bit more um, some animation stuff as far as I know, but besides that, it's really a small component. So this router outlet is what the Angular router is actually looking for. So in our app routing, we define uh, different routes uh, with a path and a component or a children that should be loaded once we navigate to a certain page of our website. And the router takes all of this information, says thank you, then somehow or someone is requesting the home page, and now the router is looking for the um, component that should be displayed. So we will find, if we go to the empty route in this case, home redirect first of all. Okay, so then the router takes this one which matches the home path, and we will load the home page module. And the router is now also at the same time looking for the router outlet in our HTML, which we have discovered in this place. So that means when the application is navigating to home, the whole body, which is an ion router outlet, gets the content of whatever the Angular router fi finds inside the route setup that we supply to it. So this is really important to understand and basically um, everything behind the router and the magic that is happening. So just imagine like iframes, there are router outlets in our page and the router of Angular is trying to fill those outlets with different information that we set up up, uh, up front. So let's take a step further and let's get away from this. So if you create new pages, you get new path and all of these can be simply accessed. So home list details are all available and could be loaded into our router outlet. Let's see list, we go to list, uh, details, we go to details. So we can reach all of them, no problem, exactly with a path. If you want to navigate to it or without uh, entering the path, which you will likely do inside your real Ionic application, you got um, a lot of ways to do it, actually. You can do it, first of all, with the router link right on your ion button, ion item or whatever element. I just picked the ion button here. So this router link is now just like an href, basically telling the router to uh, do whatever needs to be done to display the list. So this would be my first button, which brings us to the list. The second button is using the router link in these brackets, and this simply means that whatever we pass to the router link in the, this block is interpreted as an object. So therefore we cannot simply put in a string here, we have an array of components which basically make up the path we want to navigate to. 
This is um, quite handy if you got like an ng4 and then you got the ID here so then you can pass it into this array and the ID will be used in the pad. So of course they will also work with this somehow um, but it looks a bit better if you do it with the brackets and the router link. So two options. Number three is opening it from code and therefore I created a new button and this button can now again have two or use two functionalities of the Angular router. We can navigate by a URL or we could also simply navigate again using an array of components that we pass to the router. And also at the same time um, the same concepts apply if we want to go to like a details page. In that case you could have uh, a details page right here and add something like this which means you will uh, specify something after the slash and then on the details page you can retrieve the information uh, that you passed. So then a URL might look like details42 oops details42 and then you will be on the details page and you can access this ID. Actually I've wrote um, a guide recently on the Ionic Academy about this topic on how to pass data um, there are actually a few ways to do it, so um, one way to do it really bad is using query params which uh, make your URL basically look like this if you uh, use big objects that you need on the next page, so don't do this please. Uh, then you could use a service and keep the information in the service or uh, something that is possible since Angular 7.2 is using navigation extras. Um, this is a bit like the old Ionic 3 way of passing data to a page. So in that case you do the same like before and then pass a new object to that page which um, contains a state and in that state you can wrap basically all of your objects. Um, and then you need to of course unwrap it on the next page but uh, that's not really a problem. So this is also a great way to pass data to your page. Okay, um, that's the basic routing. So. You might have all of the stuff in your general app routing. Um, this is pretty easy. You got some uh, general path, then you might have some with dynamic information, but things are not really complicated yet. Things only get really complicated uh, once you start to use the tab bar or the site menu and then you suddenly have uh, child routing files and you don't really know what's going on. So that's what we're gonna do now and we're gonna step through everything for the site menu and for the tab bar um, in terms of the path. So we will not build it. Um, you can find the information linked below and also on the Ionic Academy there are quick wins on the tab bar, the site menu and combining everything of course. Okay. So um, for one of the recent tutorials or courses inside the Academy, I've built this application. And this is very typical that you have a login page up front. So in routing, uh, the first redirects to a login and uh, then we got a tutorial guide that's not really relevant here, um, plus this path also. But what's relevant is that after the login, we navigate to an app. And this could be any page. This could be a regular page, this could be a menu page, or in our case, let's say a tabs page. So the router is really not interested in what is going on. He's just looking for something. So if we just go to the um, path slash app, um, the router will look through all the information up here. Nothing matches and this one matches. Okay, so let's dive into the tabs page module, uh, which is right here. And remember, we're now routing to slash app. Okay, that's the path we got after the login. So we arrive on this page and now the first part which was um, slash app is now already resolved. So imagine an array of path components and the first one is now already resolved. So we end up here looking for an empty path basically. And that means um, the first object we got here immediately strikes because we got an empty path. So um, we tell the router to redirect to home and because we already used this information, we can now continue to the next block. So until here we arrive um, with also uh, matching the empty path um, because this has the information to path match this empty path only with a full match. 
Um, this means if we navigate to, okay, this, um, this path is valid because we really have a completely empty path. But if there's something else in here, um, this wouldn't strike because we still got something. So it's looking for the blank space, um, but only if there's really only this blank space. Okay, so we've redirected to home. We come to this part um, and then we will use the tabs page first of all. So imagine the router already loading the tabs page into the outlet. And then we will also try to load the child home, which matches our home route now, into the outlet now of the tabs page, okay? So I hope this one too fast. Um, but maybe we step back to the tabs page. So first of all, the router takes the tabs page, which holds the markup for the Ionic tabs. And the interesting part about the Ionic tab bar is actually, uh, let me bring this in. Uh, it is specified here on the Ion tabs component in GitHub. Ion tabs is a stylus component that works as a router outlet in order to handle navigation. So the Ion tabs basically is again a router outlet. Interesting, right? That means we can use it as a parent component right here and we can load new things into the router offload of the ion tabs. And this is exactly what happens with a tab bar. So in our app, if we log in and go to app slash home, we will see that we got a tab bar at the bottom and in here we got some information, whatever. Actually, I think I removed my API key, so now everything is gone in the application. Great job, Simon. Anyhow, this should still work. So here we got the router outlet, uh, which uses the children for the tabs page, which is always present in the background or as a parent. And then you can see the path um, app menu and app. Okay, I should have used my API key in here. Anyhow, that's how the tab bar works. And now the thing is, um, the menu works basically uh, the same. So we could go back here and this could be now a menu page holding the general structure for the menu, which looks like, where is it? Right here. Let me just bring it in from the article. So the general structure for the menu would look like this. And the menu again has a router outlet that can be filled. So the menu on the side holds the links. And if we click on it, the, um, the ion router outlet which is the main content area will be filled with whatever information and now the cool thing is about ionic 4 that this is not really complicated anymore and you can combine all of this and that's exactly what i did in this course as well so we navigate from the login to this app page which holds the general routing for a tab bar we got a home we got news uh, we even got news details um, and we also, as a tab, got a menu, which looks in the app um, like this. So we call this profile a bit disguised. And if you go there, you will see that this page has a menu on the side. Why? Okay. So the app is now again, or the Angular router is using information from top to bottom. Okay. It starts at app, resolves to the tabs page. Tabs page uses the tabs page as the general router outlet and then loads the menu into the content area. And the menu is now, again, just like the tabs, uh, using this markup where we got the empty path here, a parent component menu page that defines an ion router outlet. And this router outlet is again filled with the children, uh, which in this case is profile. So if you inspect the URL, which is app slash menu slash profile, we can directly go through all the steps the router is taking. And these are basically go into the tabs page module for app. Okay, app is resolved, looking up menu and profile. Going through this, okay, here's the menu. Let's go to the menu page module. Menu is resolved, last part missing, profile. Okay, empty path, profile, and there we go. And that's exactly the structure of the Angular router and what the Angular router is doing in your application.
um, you have to keep this in mind. Whatever you set up, um, these are the child routes that are loaded at a later point and the Angular router is going from top to bottom. So whatever is defined in the app routing module will be used first and then once we got a match, we dive into the child routing modules. Also, what's important is if we would have something like app upfront here that loads a different page, the Angular router would strike immediately right here because it will always look through the array and take the first entry that matches what the router is looking for. So that's very important. Um, what's also working is having the same thing in multiple places. So if you maybe got app and also app slash whatever, these two definitions inside our routing can exist with the same tabs page module. Okay, you could even have it in um, uh, more whatever places. I think you understand what I mean. So you can have this uh, how often you want to have it. And now I need to check back what I've written in the article as well. Okay, yeah. Um, this is also interesting for debugging your routing. Um, simply go to the app routing and say enable tracing. So if we go ahead and save this information, the router will print out what I told you in the last five minutes, basically, I'm um, going through the different steps and maybe even a bit more <laughs> information. <laughs> Uh, a bit more information, I guess. But you see router navigation start, config load and uh, routes recognize, child activation start, path app. So we're trying to resolve app, then we're trying to resolve the empty path, then we're trying to menu, at some point profile. Um, actually, I'm a pretty good Angular router, I guess. I could do the job of the Angular router. But I don't talk all of this, right? So. I hope so. Um, that's basically it about the Angular router. And a lot of you had problems with this in the past, especially the side menu, the tab bar. Uh, but once you understand this hierarchy of going from top to bottom and simply following the path that the Angular router is taking, um, it becomes a lot easier. In earlier versions of Ionic 4, we had tab bar stuff uh, where we had like tabs and then um, uh, tab one, whatever. So here we had named router outlets that were filling a specific named uh, routing outlet, which is also possible with Angular still. Um, but luckily this was removed. So our URLs look now very clean again like this. And the last thing I want to talk about is modal views. Um, actually not really talk about it, but just bringing up a fact that is, if you're using um, modal pages in your application, um, this actually doesn't affect the routing because these modal pages are, hey, what was that? Uh, no idea. Um, these modal pages are displayed above the actual components in your application. Uh, I don't know if I got a modal page in here. No, I think I don't. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, but once you open them, you will see that the URL is not changing and you also don't need any app routing information for modal pages or popovers because those are special components that live outside of the Angular router and simply above your um, components. And that's it for today's lesson uh, about the Angular router in Ionic apps. I hope I haven't been too fast in the main part of this tutorial. I'm sorry if I was. Please ask any questions. I know the Angular router is scary and sometimes confusing for a lot of you. So always be uh, feel free to ask your questions. And of course, also check out the Ionic Academy where this great course is hosted in which we actually also build a dark mode for our application. So really cool course. Um, check out the ionicacademy.com. You can start your membership um, and also have 14 days trial for just $1. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and then you will receive all the great videos. Tuesday code, Thursday vlog styled videos, and then I'll catch you inside the next video. So have a great day and take care.